hardening a system or a device is the process of reducing potential security risks by disabling or restricting certain functionality. Fewer functions usually means fewer possibilities of an attack or data leak. Hardening is often done to increase the security of personal devices used by people in influential positions, like politicians. Conveniently for us, the US government and non-profit organizations like the Center for Internet Security have made some of their security checklists publicly available. Of course, agencies like the NSA might also know about unpublished zero-day vulnerabilities, which they might only fix on specific devices, but using the recommendations that are public will still increase any iPhone's security. Many companies and organizations provide their own recommendations based on the guidelines by NIST and CIS. For example, I found this one by the University of Texas at Austin. Most of these checklists are still based on iOS 13. This video is based on the currently latest version, iOS 14. Let's go through the most important recommendations. I'll be showing where to change the settings in the iPhone itself, but if you own a Mac, you could also use the Apple Configurator 2 from the Mac App Store to create a device profile for yourself. This is basically a template for device settings you can quickly apply, which you then copy to your phone and enable it in the settings. So the most basic security should be obvious. Update the operating system to the latest version. You can even choose to install updates automatically. After a few years you might have to replace your iPhone to stay up to date with the most recent security updates. Also pretty obvious, don't jailbreak iOS or sideload apps. Jailbreaking disables many security features by design and makes it much easier for malware to infect your phone. Apple's tight restrictions on app installations definitely have drawbacks for consumers, but they do provide a layer of security as well. In the App Store settings, Enable automatic app updates. This makes sure you receive any bug fixes quickly. To be able to erase your phone's data remotely in case it was lost or stolen, you need to enable the feature Find My iPhone. This enables several emergency features on iCloud.com, like locating the phone on a map, play sounds, and remotely locking or deleting it. Apparently, Apple has implemented the location tracking in a way that is private even from themselves. I'll link an article in the description with more info. Next, make sure to encrypt device backups with the Encrypt Backups checkmark when the iPhone is connected to a computer. Choose a strong password if you select encryption for the first time. In case you sell your phone or give it away for repairs, backup the device and then erase all content and settings so no one is able to recover any sensitive data. You might need to type in your device passcode to confirm this. In the Apple ID settings, you should use two-factor authentication and a recovery key to protect your account as well as possible. This makes hacking and phishing attempts by attackers much more difficult. You should definitely use a passcode or even better an alphanumeric password. The National Institute of Standards and Technology recommends at least six characters, but I would go even further. If you want to use Touch ID or Face ID, I would really use a more complex password since you won't need to enter it very often. If you don't want to use any biometric unlocking technology, it probably is going to be very annoying to enter a long password every time. Touch ID with a complex password is not perfect but most likely more secure than just using a short and simple passcode. Also, set an auto-lock timeout so your device doesn't stay active when it's just laying around. Obviously, lower values are more secure, I would choose 3 minutes or less. Especially if you're using biometric unlocking, there is no reason to not set your device to require the passcode immediately after locking. Otherwise, there might be a short time window when the device can be unlocked without authenticating. This screen controls which features are accessible on the lock screen. I would at least disable control center and USB accessories to prevent any changes without authentication. If you're really serious about protecting your iPhone's data, you might want to enable Erase Data after 10 failed passcode attempts. 
there is a small chance someone, like a child finding the phone, might trigger this by accident, but the passcode attempts have long timeouts in recent iOS versions. I think you need to wait an hour between later attempts. Some basic Safari settings include enabling the fraud warning, disabling autofill of contact info and credit cards, and preventing cross-site tracking. You could also download an ad blocker from the App Store, iOS calls them content blockers. While other settings like blocking all cookies or even disabling JavaScript completely certainly would improve security significantly, it unfortunately would break most modern websites. First, disable Ask to Join Networks and Auto Join Hotspots. This makes joining a wrong, potentially malicious network less likely. Your phone will still join known networks automatically, but you will have to manually select unknown networks. Turn off AirDrop when you're not using it. Otherwise, your phone announces itself to people nearby, so unless you're expecting to send or receive files, it should not be visible on AirDrop. Apple unfortunately made turning off Bluetooth harder in recent iOS versions, which means the only way to properly turn it off is in the settings. The toggles in the control center just disconnect all Bluetooth devices. I understand that if you're using wireless headphones, this might take away a lot of the convenience, so decide for yourself if you want to enable it manually every time. Just be aware that Bluetooth can be an attack surface and might even be used for location tracking indoors. Also, turn off personal hotspot if you're not using it to prevent unauthorized people using it. This option is only selectable if mobile data is enabled. Decide if you really need iCloud Sync, especially with the recent announcement for iOS 15's expanded iCloud scanning. Even though most of the data synced to iCloud is encrypted, not all of it is end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning Apple or someone who has access to Apple servers could be able to view it. iOS 14 introduced better control over location access for apps, so you should be able to either allow access a single time or always, but if you don't want to deal with this, you can still turn off location completely. By the way, many of these system services probably don't need location access. Apple has an explanation page on what each of these settings are for and most still work without location. Make sure to review the other permissions in the privacy settings as well. Some apps might have unnecessary permissions they don't really need. For additional security, you could enable some content restrictions in the screen time settings. These restrictions might be useful in rather specific circumstances, for example, if someone steals your phone while it is unlocked or if you're forced to unlock it. By disallowing account changes, a thief could not unlink your account without knowing the screen time pin, even though the phone is already unlocked. This video probably could go on a lot longer, but I'm going to stop here. Remember, you're still using a smartphone and all of its advantages. If you want complete radio silence, you shouldn't be using a phone at all, or at least switch to a brick without internet access. For even more info, check out the configuration tables for the Department of Defense in the description. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel.